today that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love you. Amen. You know, I just want to sit there and there was, that, was, that just came in my heart and the spirit of saying, everything is going to be all right. You know what I mean? <laughs> everything is going to be all right in Christ Jesus. Come on. I mean, we just got to go and put it, call it the way you're supposed to call it. Everything is going to be all right in Christ Jesus. I thank you for those who are going to sign up this morning and listen to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because, man, it's all about the word. It ain't about people. It ain't about the backdrop. It ain't about the person. It's about Jesus. As long as we're talking about Jesus, as long as we're sitting there hoping and focus on the word of God and preaching what the gospel is all about, everything is going to be all right. Because the foundation is Christ Jesus. And, and see, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son so that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Because you know in this life, in this world, we have challenges. No question about it. But the fact is that we trust and we build our foundation on Christ. See, you know the Bible? It's very clear in this world. You're going to have uh, the, the ups and downs of living. Right? You're gonna have the people, you're gonna have things that come against you, you're gonna things that come for you. And then the thing is that you're gonna have life, physical life, and you're gonna have physical death. That's a guarantee those things are gonna happen in our life. But the thing is, everything's gonna be all right because in this life, Christ came to give abundantly. That's in John 10 10. He says, See, the Satan come to steal, kill, and destroy, but Christ come to give life and life more abundantly. Amen? So we're talking about abundant life now, eternal life in Christ Jesus. And, and, and I understand those who, who go, well, I don't, I don't know about eternal life. You know what? All I can tell you is this. Focus on abundant life. Focus on the fact that, that Christ come to give you life and life more abundantly. And then recognize this. Our hope is not in you. Our hope is not in me. Our hope is in Christ Jesus. God Almighty sent his son to link us back to him, to connect us back to him. See, one of the things is, and the one we'll talk about this morning, is that we have, the enemy does it very, I mean, the enemy is a professional in, in the creative division and in despair. Because see, when, when we sit there and say, well, I, I, when we look at what well, let me put it this way. When we look at ministry, uh, focusing on the, the, the fault finding and pointing out the errors, instead of ministry building up and perfecting the saints, building up and perfecting the world and saying, look, we got hope here, man. We got hope in Christ. See, I know we have a bad history. I know we have a bad history personally. I know that we have faults personally. We have faults as a people, we have faults as individuals. We know that. I mean, you don't have to tell somebody that they're weak. What you want to tell somebody is that they are strong in Christ. You want to be able to tell somebody that in Christ I can do all things. You want to tell somebody that you have eternal life in Christ Jesus. You want to tell somebody that you don't have to worry about going to hell because Christ has already redeem you from going from the curse of death in hell. Amen. Let's pray. Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus for this opportunity to come and worship your holy name. Father, I thank you, Lord, that you are telling us we build our foundation on the rock of Jesus Christ. We build our foundation that you have established. We build our foundation because the Holy Spirit is here to lead us and guide us in all truth. And we ask even in this video, let the Holy Spirit have his way, move me out of the way, and allow the Holy Spirit to reach out to the person, to reach out to the people that's going to listen to this video, listen to this live, knowing that Jesus Christ is Lord. I thank you, Lord, for the mighty work you're about to do, and I declare in the name of Jesus 
And we're going to build our foundation on the rock. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Right. Well, you know what? Hey, <laughs> I, 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 I was, when you look at the news, when you look at statistical data, because we had a, we had some issues this week where we talked about stats, right? We talked about uh, there was a, some stats that came about how many murders were committed uh, in in 2020, and then the the concerns about whether they're going to continue to 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 go up in 2021, 21, almost over with anyway. So we'll see what those stats look like. <laughs> but one of the things is, and I, and I want to put this for everybody that listen. See the 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 color, the melanin in my skin that you see right now. Those of you that see this melon is in my skin right now. Hey, it has no intellect in it. The melon. It does not influence behavior. The melon. What it mean is, you know, when that skip when that song that said, what love has to do with it, right? Well, what does color have to do with behavior? Think about it. What color has to do? with behavior and then what responsibility does one person has over the somebody else that has the same color what i'm trying to tell you as far as melon is concerned this is not a jersey right what i'm saying is what i mean this is not a jersey it cannot be put on and put off see when i when i join a team when i join some organization and they have some type of uh uniform or or like a sports jerseys that I could I choose to pick the jersey for the team that I want to win or to watch. But there is no choice in the melon that you are born with. And there is no disgrace in the melon that's in your skin, whether it's more or lack of, whether you are uh, so much melon that you 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 call a, a, a people of color, or you put it in that that you have lack of melon. You call people that they call themselves white. But the whole point is that regardless of what society has done, and that's what life has done, right? That's what the world has done to create division, is to try to take use the melon our skin as a jersey as a means to try to say that this is who you are based on the melon in your skin. The melon in my skin does not determine who I am. The melon in the skin does not tell you who you are. Regardless of people, I'm telling you, social constructs, social things created by man is not something that is created by God nor ordained by God. <laughs> Where in the scripture you see what God is talking about color <laughs> when he deals with people. He talks about behavior, huh? Whether you are a nation of people, meaning you can be a, a, a people of a Israeli type, Hebrew, or you could be a European, you could be, you know, like I said, Roman, or you get to be Greek, you know, those are nations of people. And those people have a foundation and a culture uh, that that associate with them. Same as organizations, right? You have you got like for example, me part of a fraternity. That fraternity has a vision and a doctrine, in it, right? So therefore, and it's a choice you make to be part of an organization. And guess what? There's even a choice to be able to lead that organization if that's what you want to do. <laughs> but there is no choice of what any of us are born into. But if there is a choice of deciding or accepting what society wants to, to, to or treat you based on this, this right here, based on melanin in your skin. And I'm trying to tell you, we're going to disarm racism. How are we going to disarm racism? We're going to disarm racism by first dispelling the myth that melanin in your skin has a role to play. That's injected by man, not injected by God. See, I, bottom line, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a person from, I'm a citizen of the United States of America. See, that, that's, I'm born in that, right? And the thing about it is that there's a constitution that, that, that 
this nation lives by. So all the other things that people try to impose on people, those things are, those things are, are really man-made, man-injected. Man wants to sit there and say, well, you know, I'm going to tell a lie that people, you know, you even raise your children. And that's sad to, to, to look and view a person based on the soul color of their skin and impose different behavioral characteristics just for the sole purpose of the color of the skin. Think about it. How, how many times we talk about it's like people with a melanin skin, they got a lot of melanin skin. Uh, when they hear, when somebody builds a list of characteristics about, negative characteristics too, about the, the melanin in the skin, you, you have no, you, there's no wonder where some people will be able to walk into a store even at the age of 60 or 50. And someone will sit there and say, that guy looks suspicious. It will follow that person around while there's somebody else who doesn't fit the, the, the melon, the, the color of the skin, could be the one who could be going around stealing. And the person who's going around stealing is the individual, not a people. And the person who's being suspected is an individual, not, not a group of people. It, you know, when we talk about race, there's only one race, it's a human race. Everything else is based on subculture, subdivisions that people want to do and divide. But in reality, we're talking about human beings. The Bible said that God created man. So you can't, you, society tries to inject social subgroups and stuff like that. And so that they can, they can feel good about themselves. But what, 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 I'm, what I want to say about today is, let's not build ourselves on lies or social constructs that are negative toward your fellow man. I know that some people have been raised to do it that way. I know that some people believe that's the way to go. But I'm telling you something. Everybody here listening to this video <laughs> this live stream must understand this. All of us will go before the judgment of God or the judgment of Christ. Meaning if you be in Christ, you still Christ, you still got to go before him. If you're gonna go, if you don't go with in Christ, then you still gotta go before God individually. You will not go before God. based on the melon in your skin, based on the color, based on the complexion, based on any physical characteristics whatsoever. You will not be judged on your physical characteristics. I did that, the scriptures clearly says that. And the, and the scriptures clearly say that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever, whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. The scripture says in John 13, 34, a new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. See, division and all those other things are foundations that are not based on God. See, you have a, you that's listening. Because most cases are gonna first start off with those people who want to hear the gospel, they have received Jesus Christ as personal Lord and Savior. That's who the audience was necessarily pointed to. <laughs> we want to be able to equip the saints to be able to talk to those who are not in Christ. And we hope that those people who are not in Christ but have an opportunity to come hear about Christ, they, they, they get equipped and, and they get the instructions as to how to come into the body of Christ and recognize this, that the body of Christ is an including, is inclusive group, not an exclusive group. It's inclusive. And it's not about the color of, it's not about the melon. I've heard better go and say it. It's not about the amount of melon in your skin. 
you're not nobody nobody is inferior nobody's superior in the eyes of god you god looks at the heart of man god does not look at this melon in your skin listen what the scripture says we have to be able to reach people based on the heart not based on the color it's not about that and i know they've been taught that over and over and over again it's been taught for 400 years it's been taught all the way back from the beginning of the doggone crazy trade it's been taught it's time for us let's so <laughs> i want us to get to that point of understanding we if you if you be in christ now see if you're not being in christ then you you just keep you you, know, you if you want to listen you're welcome to listen but if you be in christ let's focus on the foundation of christ amen the, you know here on the slide you see right there said we need to be making sense and understanding god's word we need to go and understand that even in nehemiah 8, 8 so they read in the book in the law of god distinctly and gave the sense and caused them huh caused them that, that's a reading the, the on the slide to to my to my uh right but to your left is it's saying is so they read in the book nehemiah 8, 8 so they read in the book the law of god distinctly and gave the sense and cause them to understand the reading. That's what we want to be able to do for those who are listening on, on live sessions, those who are listening on the video, is let's make sense of God's word. And what one of the things will make sense of God's word is, we're not gonna go and focus on uh, uh, the superficial phase of man. We wanna focus on, and that's the only thing we're supposed to focus on anyway. What the word says concerning what we're supposed to do and do are we supposed to be able to go find faults and hate one another treat one another bad <laughs> because of the melon in our skin because of the behaviors that we have do we want do we want to steer people toward the, the doing things that are right or do we want to steer people by love because you're not going to steal people steal people anywhere by hate and our history has, has borne witness of that that you're not going to you're not going to change people through hate you're going to change them through love and the fact is that change is going to come because of the commandment by christ so let's see what the word says and let's teach people build your foundation 